Egypt's Threats and Diplomatic Maneuvering, Analysis of the GERD Dispute. Hello and welcome. I am Afomi Ayelio and this is News Analytica. Today, we're bringing you the latest developments in the escalating tensions between Egypt and Ethiopia over the Grand Ethiopia Renaissance Dam. As Ethiopia prepares for the fourth round of filling the dam, Egypt has responded with its usual threats and diplomatic maneuvering, reaching out to almost every country except those in Sub-Saharan Africa. Despite the fact that 9 of the 11 repairian states are in Sub-Saharan Africa, Egypt has once again warned of the dangers the fourth filling could cause, even though the previous three fillings of the dam had no impact on the downstream countries Sudan or Egypt. In fact, while Ethiopia has been filling the dam over the past three years, Sudan has repeatedly suffered from devastating floods caused by the Nile's overflow. Meanwhile, the Aswan High Dam in Egypt has been at maximum capacity during the same period. Yet, despite these facts, Egypt has continued to ratchet up its threats and rhetoric, saying that all options are on the table. In today's news analysis, we will take a closer look at the ongoing diplomatic row between Egypt, Sudan, and Ethiopia, which has been the main point of contention since the dam's construction began. Stay tuned. In mid-March, tensions continued to simmer between Egypt and Ethiopia over the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, GERD, as Egypt's Minister of Irrigation and Water Resources, Hani Swalem, addressed the UN 2023 Water Conference in New York. Speaking on behalf of his country, Swalem spoke of the potential damage Egypt expects from the controversial dam project, which has been under construction on the Blue Nile since 2011. The building of the dam has been ongoing, with no consultation and without conducting adequate studies on safety or its economic, social, and environmental effects on the repairian countries, Swalem stressed. However, what the minister failed to mention is that the previous three fillings of the GERD had no impact or whatsoever on Egypt. Furthermore, for the past 60 years, Egypt and Sudan had signed an agreement to share almost 90% of the Nile waters between them, effectively ignoring the pain and suffering of the nine other African countries that contribute the lion's share of the waters. Meanwhile, Egypt's foreign minister spoke at the 159th session of the Council of Arab Foreign Ministers, reiterating concerns over the GERD. According to him, the dam could pose a great danger to his country, which suffers from the unique water scarcity as the driest country in the world. However, the foreign minister failed to acknowledge the devastating and recurring drought that has displaced thousands and killed millions of cattle in Ethiopia. Despite the ongoing tensions, Egypt has yet to offer any humanitarian assistance to the people affected by the drought. The situation between Egypt and Ethiopia continues to escalate, with Egypt's foreign minister issuing a threat against Ethiopia. During a telephone interview, Shukri said that all options are open and all alternatives remain available, and Egypt has its foreign relations and its capabilities. According to sources, the Egyptian General Intelligence Service, EGIS, is already preparing for a cyber attack on Ethiopia, with President al-Sisi reportedly giving his approval for the plan to become EGIS' top priority. This comes at a time when Ethiopia is facing an increasing number of cyber attacks. While the exact details of the attack remain unclear, the situation underscores the deep-seated tensions between the two countries. Ethiopia has already been the target of multiple cyber attacks in recent years, including one on the African Union earlier this March. In May of last year, Ethiopia's communication security agency announced that it thwarted cyber attack attempts targeting the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, with more expected in the future. Egypt has been outraged over Ethiopia's ongoing construction of the dam, without prior agreement from itself and Sudan on its operation and storage of water. However, this has raised accusations of hypocrisy from Ethiopian and other repairian nations. For the past 60 years, Egypt has enjoyed a monopoly of the Nile waters and has consistently grown economically, while downstream repairian countries have suffered from consecutive droughts that killed millions. While people in Ethiopia starved to death, Egypt benefited from the Nile waters by exporting water-intensive crops like cotton and wheat. 
As tensions run high between Egypt and Ethiopia, it is important to note that Egypt's entire lobbying efforts are directed at the Arab world, Europe, and United States ignoring riparian nations almost completely. Egypt wants Europe, the US, and the Arab world to decide on the use of African resources. This is a direct definition of colonization, and notably, Egypt has been reaching out to almost every country except those in Sub-Saharan Africa, even though 9 of the 11 repairing states are in the Sub-Saharan Africa. With so much at stake, it is crucial that all parties come to the table and engage in constructive dialogue to find a mutually beneficial solution. Instead of threats and diplomatic maneuvering, all repairing countries should be given a fair share of the Nile waters to support their economic growth and development. That's all for today. Join us tomorrow for another edition of News Analytica.